How many lovers have you made today? Chapter 11, Day Ahead. Anon is pleasantly surprised by how ordinary this is. Well, almost. For the better part of morning courts, Celestia has been acting like her typical self. The ponies that came by took notice of her horn ring, but none commented as to why she was wearing it. Things were discussed and business dealt with as usual, though between the time a subject left and the guard brought another, things changed. She would nuzzle, embrace, and even kiss him just before they entered her courts, then return to her usual stoic demeanor, proceeding as if none of what she did had happened. There have also been the guards watching them from the corner of their eye. They remain diligent in their task, facing forward and waiting for orders from the princess. But Anon knows they're paying attention to what's going on between the two. There's no doubt in his mind that this will quickly pass down until it gets to Shining Armor, but that's of little concern to him. Now, what Anon is concerned about is just how empty his head is. There's little thought on why he should cut ties with her and save them both the pain of his passing. Now, those thoughts have long since passed. Things like how ponies will react and what it means to be a partner have taken its place. It's troubling, because he wants to give her as much as she's given. And yet, what could ever compare to the love she's given? Sure, he loves her, but it's not as important when compared to hers. There has to be something he can do to make this right. Are you alright? Celestia asks as the latest pony leaves. Just thinking about this relationship. Anon admits. Celestia turns her full attention to him. Anything I should be worried about? Anon takes a breath to calm himself. Uh, so I know this isn't a competition or anything, but I feel as if I'm not bringing enough to the table here. You're a princess. You give me anything I ask for, and, well, you love me too. All I do is hang around, and I can't offer you as much as you have. So, I don't know. It just feels one-sided. Despite the nature of his concerns, Celestia can't help the smile it brings her. Knowing that he's so worried about how things are between them makes it clear that he's taking this as seriously as she is. Oh, Anon, I don't need anything other than your love. She nuzzles him. That means more to me than my title and all that comes with it. Celestia feels a mischievous spark inside of her. However, if you want to indulge me, a kiss would do just fine. That shock of embarrassment is palpable to Anon. Nevertheless, she's right. For the most part, Celestia is the one initiating contact, while Anon is just along for the ride. Maybe he can be a bit more impulsive with this relationship. Take charge of a few things to put it out there that he's trying to make this work. Um, alright. Anon leans in for a kiss, but just before their lips meet, the door to the throne room opens. Auntie, you summoned me to court. Cadence freezes in her tracks as she fears she may have interrupted a pivotal moment between her aunt and Anon. Anon cannot believe the timing of this pony. It's as if the world is testing his resolve. Well, he can't stop now, so he pushes his reservations aside and leans the rest of the way into the kiss. Celestia is pleasantly surprised by Anon's initiative, despite being the center of attention. They share a short kiss, and once they pull away, Celestia looks to her niece with a broad smile. Correct, Cadence. She answers without skipping a beat. Anon and I are going to be busy during lunch, and unfortunately, my sister cannot watch over day courts. Are you available? Like the heat of the sun, Cadence can feel her aunt's love radiating from her. Despite her aunt's imposing aura, what grabs Cadence's attention is how strange Anon's love is. It's nothing like she's ever experienced before. The only way she can explain it is that his love is only existing because Celestia is nearby. Like the moon that reflects the light of the sun's aglow, his love for her is only there because her love shines onto him. It's enough to cause Cadence pause. She believes he's still at odds with what he feels, but that's understandable, considering who he's with. A smirk grows on Cadence. This is going to be better than she expected. I have nothing planned. Cadence answers. I can take over Daycourt if you wish. I'm sure you and Anon are very busy. Thank you, Cadence. Celestia looks out a window. In fact, it appears to be that time. She looks down to Anon. Ready? He sighs. Yeah, ready. 
Cadence just waits as Aranz and Anon get up and walk past her. Love the ring? She comments. I believe it fits me perfectly. Celestia gives a titter. Good day, Cadence. Good day, you two. Cadence gives them a small wave as Anon ignores the entire situation. Once the two are gone, Cadence giggles uncontrollably as she hops a little in place. Oh, she did it! Excuse me, we have ponies waiting. A guard says. Cadence shakes off her excitement as she walks over and takes a seat on her aunt's throne. Very well. Send the first one in and get Channing over here as well. I have a few things I'd like to discuss with them. Understood. The guard salutes and walks off. Cadence can feel her heart racing. This isn't what she expected when she woke up today, but she's beyond happy that those two have gotten together. Now, all that's left is her aunt Luna. If that works out, then everything will be perfect. Luna looks before the broken griffin before her. Admirable, but foolish. In a contest of wills, it's better to hold defense than attempt to strike. With a small flourish, she puts her saber back into its sheath. You are strong, but that matters little when faced with technique. Luna looks to Blossom. What others are there? Blossom chuckles as she looks over the many injured creatures she brought in. That's all of them. Luna nods. Very well. That will conclude training for today. Heal their wounds, and we'll start fresh at first light. Well, you heard the princess. Blossom shouts. Maddox, heal the requisites with 99% efficiency. If any of you waste magic, I'll have you lifting the entire battalion for an hour. The medics give a salute before rushing over to the injured. Blossom walks over to Luna and gets close to whisper to her. You were sloppy. Something happened? Luna smirks. Let us speak in private. Blossom leads the princess to her office as she closes the door and takes her seat. I guess it has something to do with Anon? Yes. I'm glad to say that my sister has finally made the first step. Blossom's eyes widen at that. So they're actually a thing? So it would seem. My sister was more than happy to indulge in the night they shared. Ah oh, yes, her birthday. You know? Luna is taken aback by Blossom's response. Blossom rubs the back of her neck nervously. Yeah, uh, sorry about not telling you. Anon made me promise. Luna calms as she relaxes in her seat. I'm not upset. I tasked you with protecting him and you've certainly gone beyond that. I'm grateful. So what happens now? Now I wait for them to grow closer. It's new for them, and if I were to intervene too soon, then it may backfire on the end goal. They will bond, and hopefully in no time at all I may approach Anon with my desires. Good to know the plan is still in effect. Blossom admits. What about me? You will return to protecting him once our training here is done. While my sister may be dedicating more time to him, she cannot be there all the time. For those moments, he will need you. Understood? Luna glances behind her to the closed door. Was I too harsh? It's to be expected, considering the training. Uh, maybe my sister is right. Perhaps I am too cautious. But I know I couldn't sleep at night if I weren't sure my knights were ready for anything. I feel the same way. Enjoy the peace, but prepare for war. Blossom remarks. Speaking of, I have intel on a possible threat. Luna's brow raises. A threat? Yeah, it's just a whisper right now, but I've been informed a small group of insect-like ponies are gathering. Perhaps something, or maybe nothing. Luna grits her teeth. Changelings. Of all the things I've faced, those are the creatures that haunt me the most. Yeah. Blossom shakes those memories away. Again, it was just a whisper, but I'll be sure to keep tabs on any further activity. Good. Should anything develop, come to me immediately. As always. Blossom leans back some. Uh, forget about that stuff. I want to know something. If things go well between your sister and Anon, when will you approach him and how? Luna feels those butterflies in her stomach. I would like to ask him in the company of my sister as soon as it's appropriate. Nothing fancy, just how I feel. I didn't expect anything less. Blossom sits back up. Since training is over for the day, I suggest you enjoy yourself. I've got paperwork to do. 
Luna gets up from her seat. Very well. Take care, Blossom. You too, Luna. Blossom is left by herself as she looks over her paperwork. This change between Celestia and Anon is both a good and bad thing. Changelings are attracted to love, so that paints Canterlot as a potential target. She'll need to be diligent about any possible invasion or spies. No rest for her, it seems. Damn, I didn't think it took place that far back then. Anywho, let's get on to our fresh donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Star 30, Battle Swaffa, Only One Thanks, Ru, Ryan, and Iron Sky. Match for Quinn and Nine, Jacks, Yastrax, Sarita, and Aros, Black Moonar, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollin, Star Brother, Mortar, Dharma, Colonel, Library, Rinsat, 9052, Will, Chris, Hunky, Rise, Soul, Shadow, Moon, Luigi, Date, Chancellor Crest, Pick Smoke, 369, Bach, Page, HGF, Murder, Princess, J1101, Cal, that's a little money, many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I'll be to the list.